Okay, everybody, today uh, we're going to be uh, just wrapping up the uh, digital painting that you see here. There's very little left at this point to do, okay? Um, now, in my last recording, we were uh, looking at uh, detail and that sort of thing, uh, different sorts of surfaces. Now, if you take a closer look, you can see that uh, there are some minor differences from, uh, from the pencil sketch and from what you'd seen before. Um, here, I can make the pencil sketch visible. The main thing that is different is I decided to get rid of the mountain range in the background. Okay, and you know, that's the nice thing about digital painting. It allows you to uh, change things on the fly if you want. Uh, in this case, what I felt after I started to paint the area in was that it just distracted from the action of the uh, of the um, figures. It just it was a, a band of uh, color, a very bright color that just kind of pulled everything away from that. So I took out all of that and decided to leave in the uh, crumbling little bit of a uh, of a temple here. You'll notice that I also changed the uh, the faces of the slugs a little bit. If you can say that those are faces. I did have a lower area there with some drool and stuff coming off, and I just thought that was a little bit distracting too. Uh, I just um, I don't know. Uh, it was just an unnecessary detail that I didn't really want to have in there. Uh, I, I think um, well the the color and the style of this uh, wound up almost being like a children's book or something. Uh, that kind of fun sort of thing. So I didn't want anything too grotesque. So uh, you can see um, that. Also, um, you'll notice that uh, over here in the uh, in the layers panel, uh, instead of blending to get this shading going on on these slugs, I wound up using a uh, a twenty five percent half tone uh, it's uh, all it is is just black but set at 25 percent okay you can see that right there so okay so this is all pretty much ready to ready to roll got a lot of uh, you know if you look closely there is quite a lot of detail here uh, you know I'm quite happy with the uh, the way it turned out the you know, the musculature and the hands and the feet of the characters are all pretty much there. One thing that's kind of challenging is, you know, getting those metal tones to look right. And that's, you know, as I said in the uh, video on painting different kinds of uh, surfaces, uh, the way you get the, the different kinds of uh, textures, the different kind of feels, is, depends greatly on what kind of highlights and um, you know, dark areas you put in. When it's metal, you need areas that are uh, like a reflective white. As you can see here, like on the, you know, the gold of his uh, of the, his um, sword handle and pommel and stuff, and the gold of his uh, wrist uh, wristbands, and then his uh, his outfit, as opposed to let's say like the uh, soft leather. At least that's what it's supposed to be of the boots, okay. And the same thing with this little character character here. You know, the texture of his the straps on his sandals is different than say the you know the metal of his his bracelets and uh, and his uh, little dagger there, okay. So yeah, pretty happy with how this turned out. Uh, I'm just going to add a couple of little things here, and so that's why I thought I would uh, I'd pop this video on here. Um, I, I think this wizard guy here might need uh, some kind of little something coming out of his hands, some sort of little bit of magic. Okay, so uh, what I did was I went to a, uh, there's a website that's just great for this kind of stuff called brush easy okay and they have a bunch of free uh, Photoshop brushes so and they have a lot of different kinds too so you can just do a search 
and find pretty much whatever you're looking for. I had found one that was uh, called Sparkler, which uh, I thought would probably work pretty well. Now, if you've never loaded a brush before, here's how you do it. Okay, so I'm going to click on my paintbrush. Okay, so I got that. Once I've clicked on the paintbrush, notice that my settings here across the top for my, for my paintbrush show up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on my brush, right? This is where you adjust the size and the hardness and all that. And what I'm going to do, though, is I'm going to import some brushes. So you import brushes. And you can see here, I downloaded uh, some brushes from Brush Easy. And they're zip files. I had to unzip them. But this is it right here, Sparkler uh, Photoshop Brushes 2. Let's load those. Take a moment, and we scroll down. See, these are other brushes that I put in here that uh, I've gotten before. Here's our sparkler brush right here. So let's open that up and take a look. And let's see what we have here. Okay. Well, now with these brushes that you load in, they're going to be pretty big at first, probably. So you know, you're going to have to size those down. But this is a good way to kind of look at the... Uh, Look at the, um, you know, the style of the thing. That's that's pretty cool. I like that. I think I might use that one. Okay, but here's the thing, though. I want to uh, I want to make sure that it's in the background, uh, but I need to put it on a different layer because I want to adjust the uh, I want to adjust the opacity. So let's go ahead and click on the color flats. And let's uh, and then let's make a new layer. So we've got a layer on top of that. Okay. And we're going to call this one. Well, we'll just call it Sparkler. Okay. And uh, now uh, I'm going to take a step back here and go back to my color flats here. And uh, what I want to do is I want to select. Yeah. Select that area right there. Whoops, not that. Undo magic wand. Okay. That might work. Okay, now let's go here. And I'm going to do something really quick here. Uh, I'm going to... Do a quick mask. If you've never used a mask before, this is this is how you do it. Uh, I'm gonna do a quick mask, and I'm I'm going to uh, kind of adjust my selection. That and same over here. Okay, there we go. All right, now if I take that mask off, you can see that only that part has been selected. Now, um, let's go ahead and inverse that. Okay, so now that should be, well, is that right or did I get mixed up? Let's, let's just throw this on here and say, Sparkler brush number two, that. Let's make it a little bit smaller, not that small. Okay. Oops, wrong. <laughs> okay, I did. I, I was going back and forth too much. So what I want to do is something like that. Okay, that might be a little bit big, but you get the idea. Now, if we take the uh, opacity down. There, there's a little bit of a uh, little bit of magic or something. Yeah, let's uh, let's make that a little bit smaller. Okay. 
Okay. Let's try that again. Okay, and then let's try and find another one. Let's see if we have another one that's similar, but maybe going the other direction. That's the fun with these these uh, these brushes. You never know what you're going to get. That's the original. Actually, what I could do is I could just use the same one and just reverse it. There's 30 of them. Oh, there we go. That'll work. So let's grab that. Let's take it down to a reasonable size. A little too big. There we go. There, that will work. And uh, now let's just take the opacity down a little bit. Uh, control zero. Control zero. There we go. There, a little bit of magic tossed in, and that should pretty much do it. Uh, let's see. You know, the nice thing, too, about uh, working digitally is if you want to change up your background or, or do something different with it, you can. Say, like, if I decide that I uh, don't like the color of these uh, of these clouds here, this, this sort of thing here, um, you know, I can just click on that layer, unlock it, and we'll just, uh, let's say we want to play with the hue and saturation. If you've never played with this, it's actually pretty cool. I can change the color just by using the slider here. Okay. And you can do the same thing, you know, with, uh, with any layer that you want. So, I want to have a different color background. Say, if I wanted to have it be a more like a blue sky or something like that, I could do that. So, say if I did want to do a a blue sky, I could just pop that in there, lighten it up a little bit. You don't want your sky to be too dark. You can have something like that, and then just. Uh, Click OK and get rid of the clouds or something like that. And there's my, my little gradient right there. I could start popping in little happy little clouds or something. Okay. I don't really like that. Uh, so <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to change it back. I, I like the uh, the red. I designed it with the red, uh, orange, and all that. I thought it, I think it works well with the purple. But, uh, but no, that's... Uh, so that's uh, that would be my finished cover. Uh, and what I would do is, uh, in my case, what I would do is open up a uh, a template. One of these are you know uh, blank templates that still has the lines on it, like that. These uh, this stuff right here. If you ever dis decide to go into publishing, uh, all these lines mean something. This right here would be what you call the live area. This is the top one third of the live area where I put a title and uh, see these this area out here on the outer edge. That's the that's the area where you can't put anything beyond unless you want to potentially get cut off. So what I do with something like this is select all and copy merged. And then Paste in place. So there, what I've got is the the finished painting on a uh, separate uh, on on one layer together, separate from the background, and I can start building up what I need to to make this into say a, a comic book. So, all right. So let's go ahead and uh, we'll hit save. And so we don't get mixed up. Let's go ahead and uh, 
and close that out. And then, uh, yeah, I'll just uh, go ahead and do the rest. So let's go ahead and open up, uh, let's find our logo that we want to use. Never really decided which uh, I want to go with, so I'll open up these three. So we've got the original black, we've got with a reddish brown, and we've got the reddish brown with it merged. I guess we don't need that one there. Oh, and I think I do have a blue one too. So let's go ahead and open up that. You can see all the different versions that I tried to make of this thing. Uh, the 3D one, I don't really, I don't think it works too well with this painted quality. Okay. So there's the blue one there. I'm not sure if I like that, but it might work better with the colors of the painting. Okay. So let's see how that looks. Let's go ahead and go back to this. Let's grab the blue one. I'm just going to yank it down here. And, uh, hmm. oh, look at that. I haven't merged this yet. You know what? I need to do that first. So let's just go up to layer and merge visible. Now I merge visible, okay, instead of flattening it. Because if I flatten it, it'll have, see all this back here, this checkerboard stuff will turn white. And then I have to remove all that later. If I just merge visible, it doesn't give me the white background. And then I can just pull this down and just pop it right in there. And there's no background to get rid of. Okay. So I'll pop that back where it belongs. Go back to my thing here. And now we'll just, um, now you can, of course, you know, do scale, you know, that kind of thing if you want. I, I usually just do a free transform. It's as easy as anything else. So let's size this down a little bit when i do logos logos are always um i always save those at 600 dpi and this artwork here is 300 so so there's a little variation there so that's what it looks like in the blue yeah that's that's not bad but i'm not sure if it hurts the eyes a little bit so actually let's just get rid of that yeah, let's try it with just the black, the original. This is the first one that I did um, in color like that. I think the black and the red goes pretty well together. So let's, uh, we'll just do a real quick free transform on this. Uh, now, if you've used Photoshop before, you're going to, you're going to find that the new version uh, boy, I tell you, it, it makes me crazy um, because for years, and I mean 20 years, in order to constrain proportions, when you size something down, you had to hold down the shift key. Now, if you hold down the shift key, it unconstrains the proportions. They did a complete reversal on that. Okay, so there's my title. Okay, Arnza, that's this little guy right here. Uh, and I've got my trademark in there. Got that centered within that one third there. I'm going to also uh, open up my I've got a little tag here that uh, that I want to use. I think it's hang on, I gotta try and find it okay there it is red house comics with uh, lo logo with price and issue okay that'll work there not perfect but let's go ahead and toss that down a little big uh and let's go ahead and get rid of that extra white there Right there and let's resize that too okay something like that would work
Okay, now I think that's I think that works. This is your your basic compositing that you uh, you have to do sometimes when you're putting something like this together. There. Now uh, this was a little I don't know it might be a little close. So could potentially move it in that area. Yeah, I don't know. We'll have to figure that out. Actually, if I uh, if I split the difference, I should be in good shape. Something like that. There you can still see 395. I don't have to shift Arnza around. I might need to uh, put a little, uh, put another little bit of info there or something like that. But uh, there we go. That's, uh, that should pretty much do it. Okay. So I've got my completed painting. It's separate from the uh, cover composite. So let's go ahead and do a save as. Uh, we'll call this Anza Cover Painting 3 Composites. And I usually save stuff as TIFFs. I just prefer that format and we're all set okay so there we go there's our uh there's our first first painting completed and already uh set up and uh ready to uh ready to go all right i'll talk to you guys next time